Wodonga Golf Club, scene of the 1972 Qantas Australian Open. A championship layout by the best Australian standards. It's a par 72. It was here in 1965 that Gary Player shot his record 24 under par 264. Outside the Grand Slam, Jack Nicholas rates the Australian Open as the number five event in the Australian stars were home, Thompson, Marsh, Crampton, Devlin, Graham, Nagel and Duck. The American challengers were Bob Murphy, winner of over half a million dollars on the US circuit, and Homero Blancas. Dale Hayes of South Africa was there. So too were Britain's Morris Bembridge and Peter Oosterhaus, and the tiny Thai, Sukri Onchum. David Graham, a new star on the world scene, was intent on proving that he could win a major tournament in his own country. He plays a five iron to the green at the par five second after making a birdie at the opening hole. A 12 footer for an eagle three and David was away to a three under par start just after two holes. Onsham. This putt at the short seventh was to stay square with power. Dead centre for Homero Blancas as he chips for a birdie from the back of the 13 to leave him one over the car. Staggering shot that one. Peter Oosterhaus, an early favourite for the Championship Cup, had turned two under and then dropped the 10th and 12th. This perfect second shot to the 13th green arrested the slide and he finished with a 71. Ronnie Shade of Edinburgh, one of Britain's top amateurs until he turned pro in 1968. Shots like this to the short 14th helped him to a steady opening 74. The end of a frustrating day for Bruce Devlin who had played so well in the Wills Masters in Sydney just a week before. A par putt here, but double bogeys at the 13th and 14th soured him. Like Shade, he finished with a 74. Sukri Oncham and Australian PGA champion Randall Vines are sympathetic. After a miserably cold opening day, it was New Zealander Terry Kendall, a World Cup representative, who led the field with a four under 68. Most significant first day casualty was America's Bob Murphy with 80. Five times British Open champion Peter Thompson assesses the position. Of course, yesterday we had a pretty stiff breeze and uh, this blew across the course and accounted for some uh, very difficult shots which produced the high scores. But this course was on the very short side and what the, the lengthening has only brought it up to say medium length now. It's not a long course even now. Well at this stage are you uh, looking into a crystal ball? Well I see uh, David Graham played a good round yesterday under the circumstances. He got the worst of the wind and, and the cold and uh, he looks already as if he's going to win. Kendall approached the second round confidently as he gave the ball a hefty swipe off the first tee. Too often in the past he had led a tournament only to squander the advantage, but it was happening again and Terry knew it. He struggled to make a par on the third and eighth and made his solitary birdie for the round on the ninth. Three times in his second round he held long putts to save par. Here he is playing to the 14th still level par, but bogeys followed at the 15th and 17th and he finished a lucky round on 74. Bembridge saves par with this delicate chip from beside the sixth green to stay square for the tournament and one under at this stage of his second round. The putts that lifted Ted Ball into second place were not falling today. Another roll or two was needed. Ball's challenge faded as he finished with 75. Kel Nagel just too short with this chip from the back of the seventh green. But much easier for Bruce Crampton, a tap in for his par three at the same hole. Murphy in the horrors the day before is one under for the round this time, searching for a birdie with that wedge shot to the long ninth. Oh, but the ball doesn't bite on this reformed and difficult green. It's a 20-footer downhill. 
so close. Billy Dunk bunkered at the ninth. A shower of sand and Billy's ball is just three feet away. Hmm, I see. Maybe now they are pleased as down goes the putt for a birdie four to put a challenging Billy two under for the tournament. Peter Thompson, making his only major tournament appearance this season, leaves a chip short from the back of the ninth. Oh, but it's a glorious par-saving putt. He had quite a few in the tournament, and he stays even after 27 holes. Melbourne's Frank Canellan, who won a hole in one tournament without ever having hold in one, is a more mature player after playing the British circuit this year. He opened with a 71 and stayed close to the pace for three rounds. His second to the 12th finds the green. And in goes the putt for a birdie three. Thompson is trapped left to the green at the 18th in his second round. He must get down in two for a 69. Ooh, too strong for that one, Pete. Ten feet past, but those hands are steady and experienced. Straight in, a good pass saver. And now Dunk with a putt for a 71. And Billy holds it to stay one in front of Peter. He's a relieved man battling Billy. Now, after 36 holes, we have a new leader. David Graham added a 69 to his first round 71 to be two shots clear of Oosterhouse, Kendall and Dunk, with Peter Thompson just one more shot away. What do the players think now? David Llewellyn of Wales. Well, I think it's going to be tight, but I think Peter Oosterhouse will probably win because I think he's, he's been playing well this year. And he... Ronnie Shade of Scotland. I think David Graham. I had the pleasure of playing with David Graham in the first round and he's hitting the ball so well. I've never seen anybody hitting it as, as well as him this year. Sukri Onsham. I think <laughs> Davis, David Graham, and very strong hitter. And maybe Peter Thompson. Uh, I don't know yet, but Peter Thompson good chance to win because he has experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bruce Devlin. Well, I think at this stage you've got to go with David Graham. He's just back from a very successful tour of the United States and Japan. I think his form is very good and, and he's confident and playing well, so... Kel Nagel. I don't know, really. David Graham must be hard from there. Uh, I think Terry Kendall, if he gets it uh, cracking, he's got the power. Uh, Donkey. Pete's the steady head. Dale Hayes. Well, I think uh, either Bruce Crampton or Peter Thompson, I think, will probably win. Uh, I think although Peter Thompson says that uh, it doesn't interest him very much in winning, I'm sure he's trying very hard to win this tournament. Terry Kendall. Can you win it from here? Say right, Tony. Yeah. No trouble. Billy Dunk. Well, uh, I think David Graham is uh, possibly, when he's in front, he's a very confident fellow, and uh, I think uh, he and Peter Thompson, uh, well, there's, there's a good half dozen fellows that could still win the tournament. Morris Bembridge. Well, we're only, we are only halfway, you know, so uh, anything can happen. There's 36 holes to go, and anybody who plays the game a lot knows that uh, in 36 holes, everything can turn itself right around. Peter Oosterhouse. I think anybody in that leading group, uh, David Graham's been playing very well this year in America. Um, Peter Thompson, although he's one shot behind the, the three of us on two under, he's, uh, he's a great tournament winner, so you can never rule him out. David Graham. Yeah, I've worked very hard to uh, learn to play golf, and I don't think that this can happen. Uh, I spend a lot of time on the practice tee, and I think that I know my game now. So, you know, I'm playing on confidence more so than just hoping to play well. I just go out and play my best, and uh, if I come up the winner, I come up the winner. I really don't even, I try to not even look at the scoreboard. You know, some people like to say they come from behind, some like to say they play from front, but uh, it doesn't really worry me. I don't care. <laughs> Either way, I think I'd prefer to be in front than behind. Can you win your first Australian Open? I think so. I'm going to put up my best effort. I feel if I go out and play my best the next couple of days, I think I can win. Tension mounts as main contenders play their second shots to the green at the 547 yards first hole. Morris Bembridge, a wood. 
Terry Kendall, a long iron. David Graham, a wood. Peter Thompson, a long iron. The Big Britain's tee shot has found the rough. And out he comes. Dunk and Bembridge are playing the fourth hole. The little Australian plays his approach to the green. But catches the right hand trap. Now it's Bembridge's turn. It's safe on the front edge. The tournament is running along and there's more to watch than the golf. Now back to the action, this action. Dunk blasts out of the bunker to eight feet past the pin. It's a long putt for Morris Bembridge, 30 footer at least. Oh, he's giving the ball every chance, but it slips past on the bottom side of the hole. Dunk makes his eight foot putt for his par four to stay two under for the tournament. Just behind are Thompson, Graham and Oosterhaus. Graham, who is one of the best drivers we've produced, has pushed his drive. It looks like trouble. What a magnificent recovery. That's one of the shots of the tournament. Oosterhaus is also in strife off the tee. His only shot is a left-handed jab back to the fairway, and he's headed for a bogey five. Thompson is safely down the middle of the fairway, as usual. His second shot is on the green, 25 feet short of the pin. He strikes this ball confidently. It's a fine putt all the way, just offline. It's a tap-in. Graham from five feet, and that's his second birdie in four holes. Now to the sixth hole, 408 yards par four. Graham is firing. He's birdied the last two holes. And here, his second gives him another birdie chance. But it's all of 20 feet. There's a right to left borrow on this, but Graham is running hot. That's his third straight birdie, and he's gone to eight under. Five shots clear of the field. Can he make it four birdies in a row? Graham is hot. That tee shot on the short seven finds the green and finishes just eight feet behind the hole. Ooster House is home too, but wide of the target and 35 feet away. Peter hit it a bit thick. He's short and he has to chip to six feet. The Englishman lags to two feet. And now Graham tries for his birdie. Oh. <laughs> How did it miss? Thompson saves his par. Houston House 2 saves par. Meanwhile, just ahead, as the crowd roar tells us, Crampton is burning up the course. After eight holes, four under. And here's another birdie chance at the ninth. This putt in, and he'll be three under for the tournament. Uh-uh, not this time. He has to settle for a par five. A 20-foot eagle putt for Bembridge on the ninth after two magnificent wood shots to the green is just inches wide. Thompson pitches to this difficult ninth green, three under for the tournament, but Oosterhaus is even par and struggling. Too strong. 
Graham, still chasing birdies, has yet another chance. Oh. And that one slips by. Oh, not enough legs for long-legged Peter Oosterhaus, and he stays square. Yet another regulation hole for very steady Peter Thompson to remain three under. Crampton's charge has been stopped with a bogey at the 12th, and he is now just one under for the tournament. An error on this hole, he overclubbed at the short 14. It's through the back, and look at that scramble. The class that champions are made of. Crampton deftly plays and saves his par and stays one under. Thompson also has trouble with his geometry. Mm, he hits a seven iron and it's well short. David Graham finishes at the back of this hard surface green, 40 feet from the hole. Thompson is two feet by the hole and Graham is inside him. Both scored pars. Both men, of course, are searching for birdies down the 550 yard 16. Thompson, nowhere near as long as Graham off the tee, is short for two and pitches to five feet. Graham, who made the distance in two but is trapped, explodes from the greenside trap 15 feet by the hole. It's a vital putt. Thompson is closing on him. Oh. Ah, bottom side, he settles for a five. And now Thompson, a birdie putt to close the gap to just one shot. It's in! The runaway Graham is almost caught. Bembridge is moving. This 16-foot birdie gives him a third round 68 and a total of 212, four under par. He is in contention for sure. Now Billy Dunk on the 18th. A birdie from 14 feet. It's a third round 70, and he is tying Bembridge at four under for a tournament in which, for the most part, the course is winning. The crowd has gathered around the two-man battle between Graham and the fast-closing Thompson. Thompson bangs a nine from the rough to the heart of the green. Oosterhouse is still there trying. And now a critical shot for David Graham. He badly wants it, Bertie. What a fine pitch. Peter Thompson wants this putt for 67, a new record. And he also wants it for leadership with Graham. But it's a 68 and he's five under for the two. Oosterhouse saves the hole for his birdie. He finished 74, even for the tournament. And now Graham, a struggle over the back nine. This putt is for a 69. Agony of this game. But David stays six under and tournament leader with a round to go. One ahead of Peter Thompson and two clear of Duncan Bembridge. One round to play and who will succeed Jack Nicklaus as the new Australian Open champion and break the drought for Australians. With one exception, foreign players have won the event in the last decade. Peter Thompson has already won it twice. The first time back in 1951 at Metropolitan. Billy Dunk striving for his first victory. The Iron Man, Bruce Crampton, will he repeat his 1956 victory at Royal Sydney? Thompson, five under, wedges to the first green. He faces a 10-foot birdie putt. 
Dunk just misses the green with two great shots. He chips dead. Thompson goes to six under and the big Sunday crowd roars its approval. Peter is a big favourite in Adelaide. But Bruce Crampton wants just another row. He stays even par. Mr. Dunk, a birdie start as well. He's now five under and just a shot off the pace. And now tournament leader David Graham crashes a drive down the first. Look at those legs and hips power the ball away. Norman von Neider says that for weight, he is the best driver of a golf ball since Ben Hogan. Bembridge, four under, is looking for his first tournament victory in Australia. He's always been a consistent player here and runs second a couple of times. Marsh hits off in pursuit of the leaders. The Western Australian is five shots behind Graham after 54 holes. Graham's second shot is through the back of the green and his pitch back is too powerful. Oh, going 25 feet too much. Bembridge, just short of pin high with his second, pitches to eight feet short. Now Graham's putt to hold the lead. Oh, sits on the lip. The little Englishman holds his eight foot birdie putt to move one shot closer to Graham. But Graham goes to the second hole knowing that Thompson has caught him. For Dunk, Thompson and Crampton, the 478 yards par 5 hole is one of missed chances. Throughout the tournament, it's been a birdie hole. Thompson, a 5. Crampton a five. Dunk a bogey six and some despair. Going to the 408 yards par four six, Thompson was back to five under. He had bogeyed the fourth. But look at this seven iron. It's only eight feet away and a great birdie chance. Crampton leaves himself a long putt off his second shot. But length does not matter if you're on line. Crampton finds the perfect line and smiles a birdie smile. No problem for Peter, he returns to six under. A short one for Billy Dunk, but it's for a bogey, and he is now a fading three under par. Here comes Morris Bembridge to the same hole. He's already had two birdies today, and is six under. Ha, oh, look at that, a foot away. His best shot of the tournament. A birdie, and Bembridge races to seven under par for the tournament lead. Thompson, Crampton and Dunk are now chasing Bembridge. They fire to the green at the short seven. wants this putt to stay in touch with the lead. Now Crampton is away. <sighs> Misses two. Thompson with an uphill ten footer to catch Bembridge is just offline. Right behind are Bembridge, Graham and Marsh.
20 footer from Bembridge just slides past the hole and he settles for a par three to remain seven under. Now Graham with a five footer to catch Bembridge. He knows it. Bottom side, badly read, David. Marsh makes a nice birdie, but he's only two under. In trouble down the tree line eighth. A hook drive has left him with very little backswing for his second. Graham's in strife on the same side of the fairway, just 200 yards ahead. He must keep it low. It's trapped beside the green. It's a great recovery shot. Bembridge salvages par and still leads Graham by a shot. Murphy, Masters winner a few days earlier, missed the final day and with Blankus sums up. Well, I don't know. I played uh, with David Graham last week. He's playing very well. I played with Billy Dunk and he's playing very well. I played with Morris Bembridge and uh, I kind of uh, I like Morris Bembridge's chances right now. Who's your money on to win this event? <coughs> well, it's a good horse race. I still like to see Dunk get up there a little closer, but uh, you have, uh, Bramish has been playing real well. Yeah. Uh, Maurice has, so I would I would think uh, he'd be the dark horse up there. Yeah. Thompson is six under on the ninth tee, but now he is playing his fourth shot from well short of the green. Bunker and tree trouble caused a fight for par. Patient Billy Dunk holds out for his first birdie since the opening hole of the last round and is now back to four under. Tournament leader Bembridge strikes trouble on the right of the treacherous ninth fairway. He's doing a Thompson and playing his fourth shot to the green. David Graham has played two and is just short. He trails Bembridge by one. Bembridge misses and slips to six under with this bogey six. Graham's birdie putt misses. Gee, he tried hard, but it's a comfortable par and now he shares the lead with Bembridge. On the 11th, Bembridge has a 25 footer and it's fast down there. The greens are getting faster all the time. It's a confident stroke, but the ball rolls and rolls and is seven feet past. The return, it's a bogey five, and Bembridge falls. Seven under has quickly become five under. And now Thompson, he is six under as he plays this chip to the short 14th. Oh, what a superb shot. On to the 15th now where Bembridge has missed the green. Now, yep, that's a bad shot, Morris. Now putting back from 12 feet past the hole. Oh, I think you can guess what's happened. Graham hitting the ball perfectly from tee to green is safely on the green from the tee. Hudson is just a whisker in it. Graham is now in a three-way tie with Bembridge and Thompson. Dunk, tails of woe. Now two under after a double bogey on the 13th, chips to the par 5 16th. Thompson has found a bunker with his second shot at the same hole. It's not a good recovery, and he's left with a 35-foot birdie putt. The 16th has been a birdie hole throughout the tournament. That bunker visit has proved costly. Now Dunk's birdie putt. Oh, he gives it a chance. Has to settle for a five. On the 17th, Thompson is on the green in two, as required, but his putt is short. He now needs a birdie at the 18th. 
Half of it either. She's never over till that semi second half. Oh, and look at his seven iron shot. That could be the difference between winning and losing the Open Championship. Just eight inches away, he acknowledges the cheers which were loud and strong and continuous. A magnificent shot. Back to the 16th. A wonderful second shot from David Graham has left him pin high off the green. He now has a delicate chip across a bunker and there's no room for error here. Now the putt. He's gone to seven under and joins Thompson in the lead, but Bembridge has made six and has gone out of the race. David Graham needs a birdie on either of the last two holes for victory. His approach to the 71st after a great drive. Beautiful shot, 12 feet left of the flag. Can he hold it and make power up the last to win the Open Championship? Groans and abject disappointment. Now it must be a birdie on the 18th for Graham. The rising star had a beautiful tee shot for placement. The shot in has left him a 35 footer downhill to the hole. One putt for victory. His iron shot in certainly didn't emulate Thompson's, but he's still got a chance. Two putts to tie, one to win. Oh. Too far, it's gone three feet back. To David, this must look like about 10 feet. And so the 1972 Australian Open Championship is tied on 281 between Peter Thompson and David Graham, there will be a playoff over 18 holes tomorrow. And so it's the first playoff in an Australian Open Championship since 1964 when Jack Nicklaus defeated Bruce Devlin at the Lakes in Sydney. Thompson says he would prefer the youngster David Graham to win, but he won't be playing that way. Graham is confident. Today, he says, I have the chance to prove my ability to Australia. Thompson is first to tee off. It splits the fairway. Now Graham, and Thompson said later that the young fella was as tight as a drum. This is his fourth playoff this year, and he has won only one of them. Oh, looks like a hook. Yes, there's his ball in the rough, along the practice fairway, and out of bounds. A penalty of two shots, and he may have lost the championship right there and then. Back on the first tee, Graham plays his third. I didn't know there was an out of bounds there, he says, but that's my fault. The biggest crowd of the tournament has come to Kiyonga for the big playoff. Thompson coolly plays his third, looking for a birdie on this 547 yards par five opening hole. He's left it 35 feet short. Now Graham's fourth shot. The man who tied for the richest prize in golf this year, the Japanese Masters worth over $300,000, needs to lay this chip dead to save himself from a disastrous opening seven. It's inside Thompson's 35-footer, but it's still a long, long putt. Thompson putting for his birdie. Oh, looks good, looking better. He's away to a birdie start, and the pressure really is right on David Graham. He's putting for six. Oh, he's missed it. He's lost three shots to the five times British Open champion on the very first hole. The players are now on the sixth. Graham is trailing by two shots after a birdie at the fifth. That's Thompson. Both make the green in two. Thompson's putt is 65 feet. Wow! Oh, look at that! David must feel he's been hit by Cassius Clay. After the big body blow, David's putt slips by. He is three behind again. On to the ninth. 
Both men drove to the same fairway trap. This hole is twice as hard as it used to be. Graham has played a bold chip and set up a birdie chance from four feet. Now Graham, and he's only two behind. Now there's a scene shift to the 15th. The second of two par threes in a row. Thompson's three iron is home. From tee to green, he's still a wizard. Graham is on the green too, but outside Peter Thompson. He charges his putt from 40 feet. Attack is the only way. Five feet past, and that's a nervous one. Thompson. Oh, well, it's all over now, I'd say. Thompson streaks five away. It's just a formality. Thompson's third to the long 16th. It sets up a birdie again. Graham recovers from a greenside trap. No eagles for him on this hole today, and he makes par five. But the steamrolling Thompson, who once won seven tournaments straight, taps in a birdie. Six ahead and two holes to play. And so we come to the last triumphant hole for Peter Thompson, Australian Open champion 1951, 1967, and now 1972. He pitches to the back of the green. It's the end of a long and frustrating and very disappointing day for David Graham, who never did overcome his first hole disaster. Most interest now is in whether Thompson can hold this putt for a new course record. The championship is his, but the putt stays out. Thompson, a record equaling 68, Graham, 74. Maybe I've struck a blow for the over 40s today, said Thompson, the tried and true campaigner.